Hi, 32134. Welcome back. Take a look at Mrs. Moser today. She's in yet another costume. I'm going to go ahead and get right into our objective for today, but make sure you have some snacks and some drinks because this video is going to be a little longer like last week. So let's go ahead and take a look at our objective for today. How do readers compare and contrast books accurately? Ooh, I see Lee. Just like last week, Lee means in a certain way, like quickly. Now watch me move, move so quickly. Well, we know that accurate means correct, so in a correct way. And then if I go back three, two, and three, four to the comparing and contrasting part of our objective, I think about our mentor sentences. And on Tuesdays, we compared and contrast using Venn diagrams with sentences, except today we're going to be doing it with books. So comparing and contrasting two things that are alike and different. So that's our focus. We're going to read two trickster tales today. Mrs. Moser is going to read aloud monkey, and she's also going to read aloud pig boy. And then you're going to be able to compare and contrast and find things that are alike and different and send it to me. Okay. So well, before we go ahead and get started, you know Mrs. Moser likes to do her vocabulary words, but before we even do that, because we're doing trickster tales, I'm going to go ahead and do our trickster tale song, all right? So if you know it, make sure you sing it with, your, with me at your house, okay? Here we go. Clever characters who like to play a trick. They are greedy, like to brag, and really slick. The story moves fast and a problem needs solved. A lesson is learned by all involved. All right, so we're going to go ahead and read monkey first. And let's take a look at our first vocabulary word up here, Mr. Moser. I want you to go ahead and try to sound out the word. Think about what it means and what it says. If you said the word was scampered, you are absolutely correct. Let's go ahead and do syllables. Scampered. Two. Let's go ahead and dab it. Scampered. Raise it. Scampered. Cross it. Scampered. Excellent job. You should know this at the end of the word, we have ED. ED means it happened in the past and it's a suffix. And our base word is scamper. Wonderful. Now let's take a look at what scampered means. Quick, light steps. Ooh, quick, light steps. So if it's something I can do, I wonder if that's a noun, person, place, or thing, something you can touch. A verb, an action, something you can do, or an adjective, a descriptive word, using all of your senses. Think about that for a second. Quick, light steps. If you said it was a verb, you are absolutely correct. Not only is it a verb, it's a past tense verb because of the ED. So in our story, when Mrs. Moser reads the word scamper, this is what we're going to do. Quick, light steps. Let's try that one more time. Quick, light steps. Good job. All right, let's go ahead and look at our second word, Mr. Moser. Go ahead and try to sound that word out by yourselves or with your families. If you said the word was sure, you are absolutely correct. Let's go ahead and do the syllables. Sure. We only have one. Let's Mr. Moser dab it. Sure, let's go ahead and b-ball it. Sure, and let's go ahead and hashtag it. Sure, O-M-G, three, two, and three, four. This is a special kind of word. This is Mrs. Moser's favorite words that we would do during warm-up. This word is a homophone. Said the same, spelled different, homophones. So we have a word that can be said the same, but it can be spelled different, so it has different meanings. For example, this word shore is land around the edge of a river or sea. But we also have shore spelled S-U-R-E. Like, would you like a piece of chocolate cake? Sure, I would like a piece of chocolate cake. I'll never turn down chocolate cake. So we have shore, which means, oh yeah, sure, absolutely. And then we have shore, like it's used in our story, the land around the edge of a river or sea. Hmm. Let me think about the word shore as it's used in the story monkey. Land around the edge of a river or sea. Would that be a noun? 
a verb or an adjective that's the land around something. Take a second to think about that. If you said it was a noun, you are absolutely correct. Person, place, or thing, something you can touch. So a shore, again, it's land around the edge of something. So we can stand on it and it's a place. So for our hand motion today, what I wanna do is we're going to have a land, we're going to have land, and we're gonna have a river or a sea, but then we're gonna do this in between because this is the edge where they touch. So we're gonna go, okay. Let's try that one more time. Excellent. All right, let's take a look at our third word for monkey. Go ahead and try to sound it out. This word's a little tougher. If you said the word was nuisance, you are absolutely correct. Let's go ahead and do the syllables for the word. Nuisance. Two. Let's go ahead and hold it. Nuisance. Let's go ahead and swim it. Nuisance. And let's go ahead and shark it. Nuisance. Wonderful job, three, two, and three, four. So if someone's being a nuisance to you, they're being really bothersome, or they're being annoying, or they're, they're, it's annoyance. So think about someone, a character or a person that might annoy you or be bothersome to you. So nuisance is somebody or some, or it's somebody who might just, ah, you just, they make you just want to scream like your younger brothers or sisters. So think about this word nuisance. If it's a thing that you can be, if it's a thing, remember when Mrs. Moser does that in the classroom, a thing that you can be, do you think that's a noun, a verb? or an adjective. If you said it was a noun, you are absolutely correct. A nuisance is a thing that you can be. So when I think of the word nuisance, I think of someone bothering me. So whenever we hear the word nuisance in the story, we're gonna do this. Hey, hey, are we there yet? Are we there yet? All right, let's try that one more time. Hey, hey, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Think about sometimes when your parents are driving and you want to get somewhere and then you always are asking them, are we there yet? Are we there yet? So that's what we'll do for nuisance because that can be annoying. And then our last word, Mr. Moser, if you could go ahead and put the camera on that word, sound it out to yourselves or your brothers or sisters or your family. And if you said the word was dull, you are absolutely correct. Let's go ahead and do our syllables. Dull, only one. Let's go ahead and selfie it. Dull. Let's go ahead and cross it. Dull. And let's go ahead and tap it. Dull. Nice work. So the word dull means unintelligent. Hmm. I know un means not. I know intelligent means that you're very smart, but if you're unintelligent, that means you're not very smart. So I could use this word to describe someone or something. So if I could use this word to describe, is that a noun, a verb, or an adjective? If you said adjective, you are absolutely correct. The dull teacher, the dull Mr. Moser, the dull animal. So I can use that word to describe something, but three, two, and three, four, this word is also a mm, mm, good word. So this word is one of our homonyms. Said the same, spelled the same, different meanings, because this word can be spelled the same, but it can have different definitions in a dictionary. So for the one we're going to use today for monkey, one of our characters might be unintelligent. But also think about a pencil. If your pencil is dull, that means it's not very sharp. Or something can also be dull, like you're doing something and maybe someone just keeps talking and talking and talking, so it's dull, it's not very exciting. So those are just some other definitions of our word. So again, we have our mm -mm good word and we also had a homophone today, isn't that so awesome? Now for dull, when I think about that word and when we say that word in the story, this is what we're gonna do. Not very smart. Let's try that one more time. Not very smart. Excellent job. All right, three, two, and three, four. It's time for our stretch break. So Mrs. Moser can get ready to read our story. Take some stretches, eat some snacks and drinks, and I'll see you back here after our stretch break. One. Oh, 
Hope you got a good stretch in. So we're going to go ahead and review our words. And Mrs. Moser can go ahead and get started on our story. So our first word was scamper. Quick, light steps. Sure. Nuisance. Hey, hey, are we there yet? Are we there yet? And all. Not very smart. Good job. Three, two, and three, four. Okay, the story Mrs. Moser is going to be reading you today, one of our trickster tales, is Monkey, a trickster tale from India. And it's by Gerald McDermott. He's the author and the illustrator. And the publisher is Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. Well, before we go ahead and read, I want to do what I did last week, and I want to show you where India is on the map. So, three, two, and three, four, this is a map of Asia, okay, which is one of our continents. And if you look right here, this is where the country of, of India is. So, this is where our story is taking place today. Okay, I'm so excited to read this book. It's so wonderful. So remember, tricks or tales. They like to play tricks, thinking about comparing and contrasting this book with our next one. Monkey! Chattering monkey. He lived high in a tree on the banks of a wide flowing river. Monkey jumped so high and so fast through the treetops, no one could catch him. But catching monkey was exactly what Crocodile wanted to do. Mmm, murmured Hungry Crocodile. How delicious a monkey heart would be. Crocodile slithered into the water. Good morning, monkey, he called out. Good morning, crocodile, answered monkey. Where are you going? To the island in the middle, middle of the river, answered crocodile. Yum, said monkey. Delicious mangoes grow there. And that's too far for me to swing. Climb on my back, my friend, said Crocodile. I'll take you to the island. Monkey swung down from the tree and hopped onto Crocodile's back. As Crocodile glided through the deep, dark water, he sank lower and lower. Monkey began to get wet. Think about how the story is making you feel right now. What is your mood as Mrs. Moser is reading? Mood me. If you need to take a few minutes to talk to your families or think about how it's making you feel, please take the time to do so. Oh my goodness, I cannot swim, shouted Monkey. How well I know, said Crocodile. Now I'm going to eat your heart. Eat my heart, said Monkey. What a pity. I left it up in the tree. You left your heart in a tree? Crocodile grumbled. Urgh. What a nuisance. Hey, hey, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Crocodile returned with Monkey in the muddy brown riverbank. 
as soon as they reach the shore, Monkey leaped off Crocodile's back and scampered up a tall tree. Quick, light steps. Got off Crocodile's back, scampered up the tree, laughing and chattering. <laughs> Look, my heart is here, called Monkey from the treetop. Just climb up and get it. Crocodile grunted and thrashed and swam away. Now Monkey wanted the delicious mangoes more than anything. He leapt from treetop to treetop until he discovered some large rocks far downriver. He saw that if he skipped across the rocks to the island, he could feast on mangoes every day. The next morning, Crocodile came swimming down the river looking for Monkey. He heard Monkey chattering. He saw Monkey jump from tree to rock to island. I shall pretend I'm a rock, said Crocodile. When Monkey jumps on me, I will snap him up, heart and all. Crocodile lay low in the water all day. Think about what would be a good character trait for Crocodile based on things he says, based on things he does. Action. Talk about that with your families or think about it in your mind. When Monkey had eaten his fill, he headed home with all the mangoes he could carry. He jumped off the island onto a rock in the river. He was about to jump on another rock, but something was wrong. Monkey looked closer, then called out in a cheery voice, Hello, rock! Crocodile was silent. He lay low in the water. Monkey called out again. I, I say, good evening, Rock. Crocodile said nothing. Rock, will you not be greeting me this evening? Asked Monkey. Crocodile thought the rock must usually answer, so he said, Good evening! Ha! You are not a rock! You are Crocodile! I'm as good as a rock, said Crocodile. You can jump on me to get to the other side. Oh, what a splendid idea! Said Monkey, here I come! Monkey got ready to leap. Crocodile closed his eyes and opened his jaws. But instead of leaping, Monkey popped a mango right in Crocodile's mouth. Here we have an example of onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia, sound words. Crash, bang, pow. Crocodile snapped his jaws shut. Quickly, Monkey jumped on Crocodile's nose, then onto the muddy brown riverbank. bank. 
laughing and chattering, monkey scampered, quick, light steps, up a tree and swung from branch to branch. Your teeth may be sharp, monkey shouted to crocodile, but your mind is dull, not very smart. Now monkey feasts on delicious mangoes every day. Crocodile lies low in the water, keeping an eye on him. And when monkey crosses the river to go home, he is always careful to jump on a rock and not on crocodile. Oh, that crocodile. I want you to think about whose point of view is this story told from? Is this from first person point of view or third? And I also want you to think about what the central message theme is of this trickster tale. Okay, three, two, and three, four. This is our first trickster tale that Mrs. Moser was re going to read, or did read, I should say. So Mrs. Moser is going to get ready for her second trickster tale, which is Pig Boy. So I will be, I will be back in a jiffy. Oh, hey, three, two, and three, four. Welcome back. So Mrs. Moser went ahead and got ready for her other trickster tale that she's going to be reading, Pig Boy, a trickster tale from Hawaii. So of course, before we go ahead and read this trickster tale, let's go ahead and do our trickster tale song one more time. Clever characters who like to play a trick, they are greedy, like to brag, and really slick. The story moves fast and a problem needs solved. A lesson is learned by all involved. Nice work. All right, so before Mrs. Moser reads her second Trickster tale to compare and contrast with our first one that we did, Monkey. Let's go ahead and look at some vocabulary words. Okay, as soon as Mrs. Moser finds her pointer. Oh, here we go. All right, so Mr. Moser, if we could go ahead and zoom in on our first vocabulary word, please. Go ahead and sound out what you think that word says. Give me a minute. And if you said the word was greedy, you are absolutely correct. Let's do syllables. Greedy. Two. Let's go ahead and swim it. Greedy. Let's go ahead and dab it. Greedy. And let's go ahead and hashtag it. Greedy. Hmm. I think about the word greedy. It says the meaning of greedy is selfish. Okay. Let's think about what selfish means. And if you remember Mrs. Moser telling you lots of stories of her childhood, you know that this word fits Mrs. Moser to a T. My nickname when I was little was Greedy Gertie because I didn't share with anybody, any of my brothers or sisters. So any of my, well, my brother or my sister. So I had to have everything myself. So my nickname was Greedy Gertie. So when we get to this word in the story, we're going to do this. Greedy Gertie. I'm going to point to myself. But what I want you to do while I read the word greedy is I want you to point to Mrs. Moser whenever I'm reading. So greedy, greedy. So be pointing to me because I sure was greedy and selfish growing up. All right. So think about that word for a minute. Do you think it's a noun, person, place, or thing? Something you can touch. A verb, an action, something you can do. Or an adjective, a descriptive word, using all of your senses. Well, if I can use it to describe, what do you think? If you said it was an adjective, you are absolutely correct. Greedy, gertie. Nice work. Let's go ahead and move on to our second word, please. Three, two, three, four. Go ahead and try to sound that word out for me. If you said the word was bristly, you are absolutely correct. Let's go ahead and do our syllables. Bristly. Two, let's go ahead and hold it. Bristly, let's go ahead and robot it. Bristly, and let's go ahead and PS4 it. Bristly, ooh, 
Let's see what this word means. Hmm, prickly. Interesting. Well, you know what, three, two, and three, four? This word makes me think about a brush. When I think of something that's prickly, I think about this brush because when I touch it, it's just, it's a little sharp, okay? So bristly also can be on a pig. Some of the hair that's on a pig, these little fine hairs are really bristly. So thinking about that word today, if I can use it to describe something, the bristly pig, the bristly brush, the bristly cactus. Do you think that's a noun, a verb, or an adjective? If you said adjective, you are absolutely correct. So our motion for bristly, when Mrs. Moser reads it, we're going to do this. I'm going to tell like we're holding a brush. And just like what I did when I had the brush in my hand, I like touched it on both sides. We're going to do this like a brush. All right. Pretend like you're holding a brush like a brush. Excellent. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at our third word, Mr. Moser. Go ahead and try to sound it out. If you said the word was roaming, you are absolutely correct. Let's do our syllables. Roaming. Two. Let's go ahead and ant clap it. Roaming. Let's go to Mr. Moser dab it. Roaming. And let's go ahead and spin it. Roaming. Oh, you should see something on this word. We have I-N-G. Ing, which means it can happen right now. Our suffix ing. So roaming means to wander around. Mrs. Moser's going to show you an example of what that looks like right now. So based on what Mrs. Moser is doing right now, do you think that's a noun, a verb, or an adjective? If you said that it was a verb, you are absolutely correct. It is a verb. So for roaming, let's do our syllables. Uh, let's go ahead and snobby snap it. Ro me. Sassy snap it. Ro me. And let's go ahead and stomp it. Ro me. Now, when we wander around, we're not really paying attention to what we should be doing, like in school, if that were to happen. So we're just going to do this for roaming. We're going to look around and go, la da dee, la da da. Okay, let's try that one more time. La da dee, la da da. So when Mrs. Moser reads the word roaming, that's what we're going to do. Okay, let's take a look at our last word. Go ahead and try to sound it out with your families, your brothers or sisters. If you said the word was seize, you are absolutely correct. Nice job. Let's do the syllables. Seize, only one. Let's go ahead and shark it. Seize, let's go ahead and... Robot it again. C's. And let's go ahead and sassy snap it again. C's. Nice job. Well, when you see something, you take it with force. You don't just take it. You take it with force. Okay? So whenever Mrs. Moser reads the word C's today, we're going to do this. Gimme. All right? Let's try that one more time. Gimme. Nice job. Now, do you think this word is a noun, a verb, or an adjective? it's something we can do if you said it was a verb you are absolutely correct but guess what three two and three four this is also a special word again this is a homophone okay said the same spelled different homophone because this word can be spelled differently with different meanings we have c's like you take something with force gimme but then we also have sees, like you see, sees, she sees with her eyes, and sees, like there are more than four sees in, our, in the world. So here's the different spellings and different meanings of those. We have another, we have another homophone. Nice job. Okay, three, two, and three, four. Mrs. Moser is going to go ahead and get ready to read her story. So go ahead and get your stretch break in, and I'm going to go ahead and get ready. In a few, I'll be back in a few seconds. 
Oh, hey again, three, two, and three, four. I hope you got a great stretch break in. I hope you have filled up on snacks if you needed to, because Mrs. Moser is going to go ahead and read our second trickster tale. But before we do that, let's review our vocabulary. Scant, oh, sorry, I was going to do the ones that we were from before. Greedy means selfish. Greedy, gertie. Bristly, which is prickly. Roaming, wandering around. La da dee, la da dee. And C's, take something with fours. Gimmick. All right, so we are going to read Pig Boy, a trickster tale from Hawaii. And our author and illustrator is Gerald McDermott. And the publisher of this book is Harcourt. Now, before Mrs. Moser goes ahead and reads, she wants to show you about where Hawaii is on the map. It is a, it's a state in the United States, but I want you to take a look at this because here is the United States. I like on this map that it's colored and in yellow, and then you have where California is, and then where you, then where you have where Alaska is, but this shows you where Hawaii is compared to the rest of the United States. It's way out here in the ocean. So look how far away it is from the other states. Beautiful islands. So pay attention to the pictures as Mrs. Moser reads today. All right, here we go. Pig boy! When he was born, he was a hairy little hog. His ears were pointy and his tail was curly. His back was bristly and his snout was dirty. Grandmother loved this dirty little boy. She wrapped him in soft leaves and sang him to sleep. You will be a little pig who roots in the earth. You will be a hairy hog who sails the seas. You will be a tiny fish who swims in the ocean. You will be a wild boar who carves mountains. You will be filled with magic. And if trouble comes, she whispered, just slip away. When Pig Boy awoke, he was very hungry. He began to eat. As he ate, he began to burp. As he burped, he ate more and more and more. He had eaten all the roots in Grandmother's taro patch and he was still hungry. Pig Boy ran into the king's gardens and stole his royal chickens. The king and his men chased after the greedy hog. Greedy, gertie. They found him in the middle of a forest. Seize him, the king commanded. Gimme. Look at the size of Pig Boy. Pig Boy squealed and became a hundred little piglets. Then he slipped away. Pig boy ran and ran until he came to the shore. Oh, we can make a connection from that word to our first story that we read, shore. He looked across the sea and saw Pele, the goddess of fire, perched on her smoking mountain. He hoped she would protect him from the king and his men. Think about how the story is making you feel right now. What's your mood? 
Talk about it with your families. Pig boy was rowing. Pig boy was sailing. Pig boy was flying over waves, rushing towards Pele. But when Pele saw the dirty, hairy little hog, she shouted, swine, leave me alone. She shook the earth. She filled the sky with fire and smoke. Pig boy squealed and jumped into the ocean. He became the pig-nosed fish called Huma Huma Nuku Nuku Apuawu. Then he slipped away. When Pig Boy leaped out of the water, the king was waiting. Pig Boy was caught. The king's men tied him to a pole and carried him away. Snort, he grew bigger and bigger and bigger until he burst free. So we have ER, which we know is a comparative adjective, big bigger. Think about a good character trait for pig boy based on things he says, based on things he does. Action. Grunt. Pig boy ripped a path up the mountain with his bristly back. The waters rushed down and washed the king and his men. Then Pig Boy got small. He ran to his grandmother. She wrapped him in soft leaves and sang him to sleep. Pig Boy is a dreamer. He dreams of roaming the islands. La la dee, la la da. And sailing the seas. And swimming in the ocean. And climbing mountains. And if trouble comes, as it always does, he just slips away. Think about point of view, first person or third person point of view, and think about what the central message theme is of this story. Excellent job, three, two, and three, four. Now I'm going to go ahead and get up and I'm gonna show you a couple things. Actually, before I get up, I actually want to bring your attention over to here because you've probably seen this stuff behind me as Mrs. Moser was reading stories. And I want to give a shout out to Thomas W., to Taraji, and to Ricky because they were our first raffle winners. And their prizes will be delivered in the, the, today or in the next couple days. So let's take a look over here. Here we have, if you want to zoom in, Mr. Moser, you want me to pick it up? Here is Thomas really likes sloths. So Mr. Moser came up with this awesome design called Don't Hurry, Be Happy. So this is something that Mr. Moser made Thomas out of the wood that he'll be getting. Ricky decided he wanted, like, he wanted a pen. So Mr. Moser made him a pen. He wanted like a greenish blue pen with gold. It's absolutely beautiful. So Ricky will have this pen for the rest of his life that Mr. Moser made him. He got to pick uh, the color and everything. And then Taraji would wanted a positive thought. And one of the positive thoughts that she mentioned was pick flowers, not fights. So Mr. Made, Moser made her a plaque with a positive thought on it that will be delivered to them. So keep that in mind for our next raffle, which I'm going to take you back up here because Mr. Moser, if you wouldn't mind 
showing this first because our next raffle is going to be Friday, May 1st. So remember, the more times your name gets put in here, for every project that you do, your name goes inside the cup and Mr. Moser will draw names out at 3 o'clock on Friday, May 1st. So for your enrichment activity for this week, it's the same as last week, and I actually had a lot of students turn this in. You can just use a piece of paper, use a poster, whatever it is that you would like, but I would like you to go ahead and make a Venn diagram of the story Monkey and Pig Boy, the two that we read, and you'll be comparing and contrasting the two stories using the Venn diagram. I'd like you to give at least three to four details or more from each. I want at least three to four reasons of how they're alike and how they're different, okay? So if you take a look over here, we haven't gotten any brand new enrichment projects, but this is one that I did last week, and this is the first one on the second projects list where it says about reading two books and comparing and contrasting, but then it also talks about recounting the stories and be thinking about that. If you can quickly put together a Venn diagram, then you can quickly recount a story. And if you remember the last time that Mrs. Moser read the stories, I did our little recount song. So when you recount a story, give important details carefully. Recount the story from beginning to end, just like you tell the story to a friend. Recount where and when. Recount main characters. Recount what's the problem. Recount important events. Recount resolution. Recount central message theme. This is how we recount stories. All right. Then we also have some of the other projects on here that I'm not going to go on about in detail because I've done that in the last couple YouTube videos. So you may do anything over here. You may do anything over here. And Mr. Shope and Mrs. Truax and Mrs. Miloski and also Mr. Shope, they have activities that they've sent you as well that you can do. You can just make sure you share them. There's a lot of different ways that you can share these activities, three, two, and three, four. You can uh, post them on class tag, Instagram, email it, Call or text your work or share on Zoom when we meet, okay? So I really look forward to this. And then also 3, 2, and 3, 4, I have some extended enrichment activities that I wanted to talk to you about because if you've done your Venn diagram, but you kind of don't want to do the enrichment projects around here, here's some, uh, en here's some enrichment project ideas you can do for the extended enrichment. You can comp compare and your contrast yourself to any character from any book. So it doesn't matter what book it is, you can compare and contrast yourself to another character. And a second thing that you could do for extended enrichment would be, what was Crocodile's motivation and support with evidence? So what did he really, really want or really, really need? All right, so these are some additional activities that you can do that will also count for enrichment projects, okay? So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I love and miss you guys very much, and I can't wait to do a next video for you. I hope you watch. Love you, miss you. Mwah. Bye.